Good morning, Darren Alf here from BicycleTourningPro.com. I'm in Cody, Wyoming right now, just outside the eastern entrance to Yellowstone National Park. The only problem today is I don't know where I'm going to park my car. I drove my car up here. I'm going to get the bike out and bike around the park for a few days. But nobody, and, and I, I can tell you nobody, I've asked about a dozen people, knows what I can do with my car. Where can I leave my car while I bike around the park? Nobody knows, so I'm gonna drive straight to the entrance of the park, ask the ranger or whatever, the person working at the gate, what can I do with my car? Um, can I park it in the park for five days and just leave it? I don't know. Um, the, the entrance to the park is about an hour away from Cody, Wyoming, so I'm gonna do that drive now. We'll get to the ranger station and hopefully he or she will have an answer for me about what to do with my car on this week-long bike tour in Yellowstone National Park. Here we go. All right, so I'm in Yellowstone National Park now. I asked the ranger at the gate what to do with my car while I biked around and he said he had no idea, which is what everybody says when I ask them what to do in this particular situation. So he said just go up here to the visitor center and ask someone there, maybe they will know. But geez Louise, it's so bizarre that they have no idea what to do with someone who wants to bike around Yellowstone. The good news that the ranger told me was, normally it's $35 to get into Yellowstone with a car. Um, but today, when I pulled out my wallet to pay, he said, no, you don't have to pay. Today's National Public Lands Day or something like that. So I got into the park for free, not even knowing that today was a free entrance day into the park. So I'm pretty excited about that. Just saved myself $35. Um, so I'm going to drive just a short distance up the road here to Fishing Bridge uh, Visitor Center. And hopefully someone there will be able to tell me. Uh, where to park my car so I can start this bike tour across Yellowstone National Park. Hello, Darren Alf here from BicycleTurnPro.com. I'm in Yellowstone National Park right now on my bicycle and that white van that you see way back there, that's mine. Uh, I parked it here in the uh, parking lot near the post office here in Grant Village, the Grant Village Visitor Center. Um, I went into the backcountry office and got a four-day permit to park my car and ride my bike around Yellowstone. So I'm doing the lower loop of Yellowstone National Park. I'm not doing the full loop of Yellowstone because I'm here in late September and all of the campgrounds are closing this weekend. So there's only like two, maybe three campgrounds that are open. So I just decided to do the lower loop of Yellowstone. So today I'm leaving Grant Village and cycling about 20 miles, not very far, 20 miles north to a campground called Bay Bridge, Bay Bridge Campground, and that's where I'll spend my first night here in Yellowstone. All right, so I'm on the main road now. I've got about 20 miles to my campground for tonight. Yellowstone National Park. It's uh, one of probably the three most spectacular national parks in all of the United States and even North America. Um, and I hope to show you why on this bike trip. It took me about two hours to drive into the park from nearby Cody, Wyoming this morning. And along the way I saw one bison and one elk. And there were signs saying that there... There were signs saying that there could be bear at any, at any point along the road. So it would be very cool to see a bear on this particular trip. Don't know if that'll happen, but um, if we do see one, I hope it's far away and not super close. I, I am carrying some bear spray with me on this particular trip, just in case, but uh, yeah, it'd be nice to see a bear from a distance. Oh. 
Okay, so I'm at the West Thumb Geyser Basin now. Just gonna walk along this boardwalk and check out the geysers here. I've locked up my bicycle just back here in the parking lot. Uh, hopefully it'll be okay, I think it will be. But uh, yeah, just gonna make a quick loop around these geysers. So that was a good bunch of first geysers here in Yellowstone. One thing that's very apparent to me is that I am the only person here by themselves. Everybody's in a group or a couple. There's no other solo people. Um, I've been noticing that more and more. Uh, I'm usually the only person by them by myself. Quite a few people told me that it was dangerous to bike in Yellowstone National Park, that the roads were really narrow, and the drivers weren't paying attention, but so far it's been really nice. I mean, look at the shoulder behind me, it's pretty big. Um, I don't know what people are talking about. This is why you don't take advice from non-cyclists. They, they, they really don't know. The. Uh, bike ride here along the waterfront reminds me a lot of my bike tours in Sweden or Finland. It's a little windier here than it was in Sweden or Finland, but the scenery is very similar. And uh, yeah, I really, I'm really enjoying this. This is nice. Look at this. So far, the traffic on this road hasn't been too bad. Uh, it kind of comes in spurts. One moment, oh, I'm out of breath. One moment, I'm all alone like I am now. And the next moment, there's 20 cars passing me. And then I'm all alone again. Oh, the altitude is killing me. <sighs> We're up at about 7,000 feet right now. So, not super high, but enough to feel it for sure. The air is really dry. Lush green forest is giving way now. Look at this. Uh, this is like a burn area where fire came through and took out all the trees. You can see some small saplings growing over here, but for the most part, this area hasn't recovered yet. It's on both sides, as you can see. There's a bunch of cars parked here, which means there's probably an animal of some kind along the side of the road. And there it is. I can see it over to the side. It's an elk. There's one there. There's another one right there. So, it's just two elk. But there's a lot of people still to take pictures. Look at this behind me.
So today's Saturday and I imagine that today is going to be the highest traffic day of the entire bike tour. Tomorrow will be a little lighter and then Monday and Tuesday, I don't know, I, I doubt there will be very many people out here, especially since they're closing all the campgrounds right now. Oh man, I'm out of breath. One of the things that's maybe not so nice about Yellowstone and so many national parks in the United States is that the popular areas are extremely crowded with people. Um, but if you can get away from those crowded places and go to the less common, uh, less well-known places, you can actually find some really spectacular places um, and have those places entirely to yourself. So this is a little road here. Uh, there are a few cars on it, but not very many. It's much more peaceful than riding on the main road. Some beautiful colors here, just these yellows along the side of the road are really nice. So there are a few trails here in Yellowstone that you can't actually bike on. Most of them you can't. This is kind of like a, a little bike trail and you are allowed to hike or bike on this short little path leading out to the natural bridge. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I think it's about half a mile or something. Whew. There was a sign at the trailhead saying to hike in pairs because there are bears. And hey, that rhymes. Um, I don't have a pair just here by myself. So, my bicycle is my other half, I guess. <laughs> I'm just making some noise to scare the bears away. But, oh man. All right, I'm just leaving my bike right there. The natural bridge is up this direction on the trail. I don't think I can ride my bike up here. All right, so there it is. It's right here. You can see it going across. It's just a small little thing. It spans 29 feet across, 51 feet high. Yellowstone's natural bridge. All right, so that was the natural bridge. We've seen the natural bridge. We've cycled along the edge of the lake and we've seen a whole bunch of geysers already in our first first day here on the road and I've only gone 24.4 miles. So pretty pretty good, a, a casual day, kind of a half day because I only started at two o'clock this afternoon. But uh, a very good easy day to begin our bike tour here through Yellowstone. Now I have just about one mile to the, uh, I think it's called Bay Bridge or Bridge Bay, Bridge Bay Campground. So I don't know how much it costs to camp. I don't know if they're going to charge me the full price to camp like I'm in a big RV or if they're going to charge me the bicycle price. So we'll find out as soon as I get to the campground here, just a short distance up the road. Here's the entrance, Bridge Bay Campground. All right, so I paid for my hiker biker campsite. The sign said it cost $8.90, but when he went to charge me, I paid with my credit card, he only charged me $8. Apparently they don't know what the prices are. I don't know. This whole place seems kind of unsure about how things are supposed to be done, but.
So while I'm sitting here waiting for my dessert, um, I thought I would show you the map and kind of show you what I'm going to be doing on this particular bike tour. I'm talking quietly just because there's other campers around and I don't want to disturb them, as you can see. So the Grant Village Visitor Center, that's where I left my car this afternoon. And I biked up this direction along the coast of the Yellowstone Lake. And now I am here at Bridge Bay. You can see there's the natural bridge that I stopped at. So um, my original plan was going to be to continue to bike all the way up here and then back down and then back to my car. But the problem is today is the last day that this campground is open and pretty much every other campground up here is closed after today. I didn't know that when I was planning this trip though. So um, this campground is open tonight and then this one over here, Madison, apparently never closes or almost never closes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bike tomorrow from Bridge Bay up here over to Canyon Village and then across and I'll stay at Madison. I think that's, what's it say, um, total distance here, 16 plus 12, that's 28 plus, so, yeah, 40 something, 42 miles maybe or something like that tomorrow. Madison. And then the next day I'm going to bike down to here and the guy at the visitor center over here in Grant Village says that there are some backcountry campsites that I can bike out to here at Lone Star Geyser. So I'll, I'll bike this section on day three and then the final day, day four, will be a short one. Um, it will be back to the car here at Grant Village. So instead of doing this big loop all the way up here and back, I'm really just doing the smaller southern loop of Yellowstone. So good morning, I survived the night. It wasn't too cold actually. Um, I put all of my winter clothes on last night and I got super hot. So I took, had to take off some of my warmer stuff. And then this morning I got cold. But overall, I slept pretty well. It's nine o'clock in the morning and a lot of the campers have already left. Um, I'm just getting started. So I'm gonna pack up my tent now, just eat some food really quick. I'm not gonna make any anything hot. Just gonna scarf something down and get going. We got a pretty full day, 45 miles of cycling today. So, should be a good one. Here we go. All right, and good morning. I'm leaving the Bridge Bay Campground now. I've got my rain jacket on. Not because it looks like it's gonna rain, but just because it's cold. There's the lake beside me. Um, and, and my jacket's bright orange in the back, so hopefully that'll help the drivers see me a little bit as well. But today is the longest day of my Yellowstone bike tour, about 45 miles. So it's about 10 o'clock in the morning now, 9.45, 10. And uh, should be a good day here out on the road. One of the strange things about biking here in Yellowstone is that when people see me pointing my camera at something, they automatically like stop and slow down because they think, oh, maybe he spotted a bear or a, a moose or an elk or something. And, and it's kind of annoying because sometimes I'm just filming myself and a car will stop and ruin my shot just because they think that I'm shooting something interesting, but I'm really just shooting myself. See, here's another one they're pulling over right now. Yep. A guy in one of those big RVs came over and talked to me last night in my campground. He's just asking about my trip and stuff. And one of the things he said was, man, can you believe how narrow these shoulders are? I don't know how it's safe to cycle here. And I was like, what the heck? He's like the sixth person to tell me that, including some of the rangers here. But this shoulder is pretty big. 
I don't know what everyone's talking about. Maybe in other parts of the park it's narrower, but over here it's fantastic. So it's day two here in Yellowstone. We've already seen a couple elk and now a couple bison. It's starting to smell like sulfur, rotten eggs. And that means one of two things. Either I pooed my pants or we're getting close to a geyser. I can see a geyser over here on my right. I can see another geyser on my left. This is cool. I just saw the famous mud volcano, which is basically just some boiling brown water. Um, now I'm walking along the boardwalk here. There's some smaller uh, geysers and things like that up here on the top of the mountain. So I'm checking those out. A little lake up here, it looks like. Let's see. Once again, like down by the parking lot, there's like a million people. And then just up this hill a little ways, most people are lazy and they won't want to climb this hill. So I climbed the hill, got the whole place to myself practically. Only a few people up here. The only thing I worry about a little bit is leaving my bike down at the road there. Uh, most of these people are tourists and I don't think there's like a whole lot of people who come to Yellowstone planning to steal a bike or anything off of a bicycle, but you never know. So, I've left my bike down there on the road in the parking lot. Hopefully it's okay. Behind me here is the mud geyser, and this thing, back in the 1800s, used to erupt on a regular basis, like hourly, kind of like Old Faithful does today. But in 1927, the geyser suddenly stopped erupting. And they think that it could erupt again in the future, but they don't really know if that'll happen. But this area is pretty volatile, and uh, pretty interesting how these geysers can change over time in a relatively short amount of time. Behind me here is the churning cauldron and the temperature of this thing changes but they had on the board there that back in 2002 which apparently is the last time they measured it it was about 80 degrees Celsius or like almost 200 degrees Fahrenheit I think like 180 degrees Fahrenheit so pretty hot. You wouldn't want to go swimming in there that's for sure. I know that there are some stories of people that have actually like gone into the thermal pools here in Yellowstone and have died because they like dropped their hat in and then like tried to get their hat and didn't make it out. There's a couple more bison up on the hill in the background behind me, pretty far away. But I see two of them there and I passed another one just a moment ago. So, several bison out here, they're all pretty far from the road, however. These two are taking a nap. Alright, I'm 20 miles into my ride today and I'm just approaching the first turn. I'm going to turn left towards the Madison Campground, which is now about 25 miles away. 
so I'm not even halfway there yet. The last 10 miles have been really difficult, very, very windy. So windy I can barely keep the bike in a straight line. So I've turned now. The wind is blowing directly into my face. It's a very strong wind. It's bringing me to a complete stop sometimes. I'm only going nine miles an hour and struggling on a flat to go that fast. I have 25 miles to go into a headwind. This is gonna be a very long day. I pulled over here. I'm so tired. I'm, I'm, I'm halfway to my destination for tonight and I'm just beat like I could quit right now. This is, this is why I don't like having to go from like one campground to the next. It's because like I have to go 25 miles. I can't, there's no option for me to like just camp right here, which I could totally do if I wasn't in a national park that didn't allow camping. But um, yeah, so I have to go 25 more miles today and I have to spend the night in a shared campground with a whole bunch of other people. I didn't really like that campground that I was in last night. It was okay, but like, the RV across from me, the guy was like sitting at the window and staring at me while I was eating dinner. And then like all night long, whoa, sorry, the, the trees are making noise behind me, it scared me. Um, all night long, like cars would drive by and shine their lights on your tent and there's people partying in the campsite next to you. And you just don't have that when you sleep out in the forest like this. Um, you have the entire place to yourself and it's quiet and relaxing except for the thought of bears sneaking up behind you. But, um, yeah, so, as nice as it is here in Yellowstone, there's some aspects, like the cars going by all the time, and the tourists, and the campsites, that I don't necessarily enjoy. Um, you know, this, this place looks a lot like Sweden or Alaska, and, I, and honestly, I think this place is much more beautiful than those two places. But the thing that this place, Yellowstone, has going against it is the fact that it's just too touristy. It's way too touristy. And, and places in Sweden or places in Alaska, I had the entire place to myself. So if I had to choose, like, would I go here or Alaska or Sweden, three places, I would probably put Sweden number one, here number two, and Alaska number three. I didn't really like Alaska, <laughs> but um, I think the scenery here is actually way better than in Alaska, and yeah, don't have to travel as far, <laughs> so that's the order I'd do. Sweden, Yellowstone, Alaska. Alright, I've turned onto another road now, and I'm heading kind of southwest towards the Madison campground wind is still in my face, so it's not fun, but it's a little better, and I've only got 14 miles now to the campground. It's very cold today. My hands are freezing. My knees are frozen. Brr.
says full. Hey, do you have room for me? I'm sure we do. Okay. Uh, if you'll just put your bike over there, other side of the flagpole, and get one. Yeah. Out. Thanks. So there is another bicyclist in the campsite tonight. He rode the same route that I did today, only about 10 miles shorter than what I did. Um, he's in the restroom right now. I'm over here. Always try to get away from everybody as far away as I possibly can. So here's my tent and bicycle. Uh, I did a horrible job filming myself today because it was so windy and I was so miserable that all I wanted to do was get to the campsite. So I just rode and rode and rode. It was like the longest short day ever. 45 miles, 46 miles, but it felt a lot longer. It felt like twice that just because of the wind. And, and the, the other guy here, he was saying the same thing, that it was really slow going today. So, um, well. Yeah, it's like one of those days where you're like checking to make sure your brakes aren't on or something. Like, what's wrong with my bike? Why am I going so slow? It's just the wind and the hills. And yeah, one of those kind of days. So I'm going to cook some food. And then at 8 o'clock, they're having some kind of like ranger program. I don't know what that is, but something about Yellowstone. So I'm probably going to go to that. Um, so that's the evening here. Food and then ranger and then sleep. So what's your name and where are you from? I'm Bernard uh, from Portland, Oregon, originally from Buffalo, New York, and uh, I'm bike touring Yellowstone here. Uh, I've been bike touring it about five days, and today I bike out to West Yellowstone, take the bus back to Bozeman and back home. So it's the end of your trip. It is, yeah. What was day. the best part of the experience? I love the colors of Yellowstone, just the seeing the aspens all fiery and seeing uh, some of the thermal pools like really interesting colors grand prismatic was really awesome uh kind of near old faithful uh i saw an old friend in canyon village that was great also uh the grand canyon of the pacific was wonderful too or of the uh of yellowstone yeah what advice would you give for someone else who's biking in yellowstone <laughs> i'd say pack lightly um I'd say, you know, be aware of cars and areas where there's like low shoulder and maybe aware of some of the traffic patterns. Certain times a day there's a big inflow in, certain times there's a big flow uh, out. So kind of watching for those patterns so you're not totally stuck in traffic or bothered by traffic would be good. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about the incident you had with this truck. Yeah, so yesterday I had an experience where I was biking from Norris area to Madison area and uh, there was an oncoming truck, a black pickup truck uh, that crossed the center line. It was coming toward me, crossed the center line and I thought it would probably go back into its lane once it realized what was going on, but it kept drifting uh, into the oncoming lane of traffic. Fortunately, there was no cars coming and uh, then it drifted across the, uh, the shoulder line, the white shoulder line that I was biking on on the other side uh, and I slowed uh, but it was basically headed straight toward me at, you know, 45, 55 miles an hour. And uh, didn't seem to be aware of what was going on. Like, it didn't seem to be slowing down. Uh, so I got over to the left into the, the lane of traffic. It went past me into the ditch, hit a bunch of trees, probably 10 feet away from me, 15 feet away from me. And, uh, and then bounced back into the road and to the opposite ditch uh, where it stopped. So it was pretty shocking. I was left in a cloud of debris and uh, it had lost two tires and a bunch of plastic and metal. Yeah. So, and I was totally unscathed. So it might be the first time in a truck bike incident that the bike won <laughs> <laughs> by sheer dumb luck and <laughs> not being hit. Yeah, yeah, that's scary. But you yeah. don't know what happened. Uh, I don't know what happened. You know, yeah. I, I talked with um, a driver who was in front of that car for a while and said the car was driving very erratically. So 
it must have even either been you know driving intoxicated or uh, sleep deprived or texting or something yeah. you know, it's pretty scary and how, how have the drivers been otherwise like what do you think about the cycling they've been good they've been really good otherwise you know usually giving me a lot of room um, uh, not honking much at all which is nice because that can kind of startle you and make you jump uh, so yeah I'd say the drivers have been pretty good there's there's just a lot of cars even late season yeah. so uh, it's something to be aware of all right so day three here in Yellowstone National Park we are at the Madison campground and I'm gonna cycle down here today through this little waterfall section on this bike only section to the Grand Presmetic Spring then down here to Old Faithful and then once I'm there I'm gonna get a permit hopefully that will allow me to camp at the end of the Lone Star Geyser uh, trail here you can see the biking trail so that's where I'm gonna camp tonight and then tomorrow I'll, I'll cycle the final section back to my car which is parked here in the uh, West Thumb Information Center so today is only about 22 miles of total cycling but as you can see there's a lot to stop and see along the way um, so it should be a pretty good day here in Yellowstone National Park. So it is absolutely freezing this morning. My hands are, are very cold. I'm going to have to dig out my gloves to cycle in today. Um, bike's almost all packed up. My friend Bernard over here, the other bicycle tourist that I met last night, he's getting packed up. He's a little run, run behind me. Last night, Bernard and I went to this... Uh, ranger station over here where they gave like an hour-long presentation all about Yellowstone and the fact that Yellowstone is a super volcano there's a giant we're in this giant caldera uh, which is the hole of the volcano and this particular caldera for Yellowstone is 50 times bigger they told us 50 times bigger than say Crater Lake which is also a volcano in Oregon so Yellowstone is really really huge um, and we learned a whole lot about the volcano and volcanoes in general last night at the uh, ranger station presentation so that was pretty cool um, but this morning I am going to continue cycling for about 20-25 miles south and today is probably going to be the most interesting day of the entire bike tour so I look forward to sharing it with you. So I've gone off on this two mile long kind of detour, very beautiful. The road, uh, the cars are limited to going 25 miles an hour in one direction, so not a lot of traffic. And the river is off to my right. I can see it pretty much the entire way while I'm cycling. Here, you can see now over there. like this the entire way. River, trees, and a quiet road. This is nice. This is the way the whole park should be. So 
I'm gonna turn off here on Flat Mountain Drive. This is a bike only trail. One of the few in the park. Here's the start of the trail. Let's see if it has a map. Yep. So the cars have to stay here and it just goes around. So we're right here and it goes around over by this lake down here to the geysers. So instead of going on the main road, I go this way. This trail is not the greatest, it's pretty soft, uh, which makes cycling slow, but there are geysers on both sides of the road, you can see some in the distance back there. Um, it's pretty cool to just be cycling through the forest here, to be able to see this sort of stuff. Look at here, you can't tell where the geyser ends and the sky begins. So many people there. Yeah. Look at the parking lot. at all these geysers and springs and stuff is really fun but it's so cold right now I can't tell you how cold it is oh, everyone is like shaking <laughs> I, I honestly didn't think that in late September it would be this cold here I knew it was gonna be somewhat cold but no it is freezing right now <laughs>
right, I'm approaching the turn off to Old Faithful, probably Yellowstone's most famous geyser. All right, I've walked my bicycle up here at the uh, Yellowstone Art Center or something, Art and Photography Center. Yep. Yeah. So it just started snowing here at Old Faithful. You can see the snow kind of bouncing off of my jacket. I went inside and tried to get a backcountry permit. Um, when I parked my car, the guy at the backcountry permit there on day one told me to come here and get my backcountry permit to camp tonight. But apparently the backcountry uh, office here is closed. So we had to make some calls back and forth between the visitor center and the backcountry office on the other side of the park. And they have issued me a backcountry permit for tonight so I can camp just a couple miles down the road here. Um, otherwise, I would have had to cycle the entire way back to my car tonight. And it's snowing and it's already pretty late. So that would not be fun. But um, I'm, I'm just waiting now for Old Faithful to go off. It goes off at 4.07 or approximately 4.07. So it's about 3.07 right now. So I have an hour to wait. Um, I still have to get my backcountry permit. They're emailing it over here. They got to print it out and then hand it to me or something. Stupid. But, um, so I'm waiting for that. Then Old Faithful will go off. Hopefully I'll get it on camera. And then I'll head to my uh, campsite, which is in the backcountry somewhere. Not too far from here, a couple miles. But yeah, Old Faithful behind me there. It was not super exciting, I don't think. It was okay to see, I'm glad I saw it. But there was so many people watching and it, and it went off and there was no like music or fireworks or applause or anything. It was just a geyser and then everybody left. So. Now I'm on this bigger road uh, two-lane road. And I go down about two, three miles, then there'll be a turnoff for the Lone Star Geyser, I think. Lone Star Spur, something like that. So I go down that, ride to the very end of the trail. I can't ride my bike to the campsite, supposedly. I have to leave the bike at the end of the trail and then hike my stuff in for like another half mile or something to my campsite. So, that's what's going on tonight. Alright, here's the turn off. You can see that bicycles are allowed. Where are we here? Yeah, so I'm right here and we're gonna bike down this direction. Oh no, I am here. <laughs> I'm, I'm right here. I'm gonna bike down this direction towards the end of the trail. And I think I have to leave my bicycle here 
and there are three campsites out here. I'm in the very first one, which means there's probably going to be people walking past me, but that's okay because I have to carry all my things there. So that's where I'm going. OA1. All right, so I'm on the Lone Star Trail now, and there was a sign once again at the trailhead warning of bears and suggesting that we hike in groups. Well, I don't have a group, as I've said before, so I'm just on my own here. It's a nice little stream over to my right. This road is actually like kind of paved. It hasn't been maintained, but it was paved at one point. It's nice. Now this is my type of road here. I wish the whole of Yellowstone was like this. If they made a bicycle path that just cut through the forest like this, that would be amazing. I just had a snake run across the road in front of me, but by the time I got my camera out, it was, it was gone. I couldn't see it. It had run off into the side of the road here. Okay, we got some water here. Man, this is beautiful. Look at this little creek right beside me here. As nice as this trail is, I kind of want it to end because I know that I'm gonna to have to backtrack all of this in the morning to get back to the road. And as a bicycle tourist, I don't do a lot of backtracking normally. I'm generally going from point to point and not going in circles. So even though this road is only a couple miles long, I don't wanna go back a couple miles in the morning. It's unfortunate that I have to do that. But anyways, I think I'm almost to the end here. The trail is pretty nice at the moment. I'm kind of on bear alert here. Now that I'm realizing just how far back I am, completely all alone. So, this is where I leave my bicycle. It's a half mile from here down this trail to my campsite and I'm going to have to carry everything that I have with me except for the bicycle to that campsite. Half a mile carrying everything. My arms are going to be <laughs> so dead. Huh. Alright, so I've locked up my bicycle. I put the permit that I got at the visitor center back at the Old Faithful uh, Visitor Center on the handlebars, so if a ranger comes, they'll be able to, to see that. And then, now I have to hike this direction uh, past the Lone Star Geysers, which we'll see in just a moment, half a mile carrying all my stuff to the campsite. I was carrying my stuff past the Lone Star Geyser, and right there is a bison. I didn't even see him until just now. He was laying in the grass, but as soon as he saw me, he stood up. But he's, he's not really looking at me, which is a good thing, I guess. Man, that guy's big. The problem is I need to go that direction in order to get to the campsite, and I don't want to walk right past him. So I'm just gonna hang here and, uh, see what happens, I guess. Maybe he'll move on and I can sneak past. You can see that that's the trail I need to take right there past that big bison. It goes straight past him. Oh dear. So this is the trail that I need to take and as you can see the bison is right there on the other side of the trail. He's feeding. He's kind of going past it. My trail goes this direction, up this way. 
and he's going this way very very slowly though so I'm just kind of waiting but I'm a little nervous that there could be more animals around that I'm just not seeing at the moment Hey buddy, he's not moving, he can't hear me, look at it, he's got his head down, he's chomping away. I have been standing here for about 45 minutes waiting for this bison to move off of the trail. He's just a little off of the trail and his back is toward me. So I'm gonna to try to sneak behind him and get past, carrying all my stuff. Here we go. All right, so I made it to my campsite. You can see that they've strung these two logs up here. Um, that's for hanging food on. And I don't have any rope. <laughs> and there's none around here as far as I can tell. So I'm gonna hang my food, but I just don't know how exactly yet or where. I may not hang it right here. I may hang it back in the woods somewhere because this is the campsite. It seems kind of silly to me to camp right underneath where you're hanging your food. Um, I'm going to set up my tent, I think, like right here. And then I'm going to put my food way the heck far away from here. Not right there, that's for sure. Put it way far away. Okay, it's after 6 o'clock now. I wasted a lot of time waiting for that bison to move. He was right in the trail the whole time. I'm going to set up my tent really quick and then cook some food. Um, I'm probably going to go over there and cook it, not near my tent. Um, just seeing that bison so close to my campsite, really just like a quarter mile away, um, has got me on guard, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to cook over there, I'm going to set up my tent over here, kind of, and I'm going to hang my food like way, way over there, way over there. So I've moved over about a hundred yards or so from my campsite and it looks like this is not the first time this area has been used for, for possibly cooking. So I'm going to cook my meal here. 
Once again, I have soup tonight. I have a packaged salad mix thing. And I have another one of these freeze-dried desserts. So that's my, my dinner. Soup, salad, and dessert. You know, it's always a little creepy when you're camped out in a place like this where there's the potential for bears and stuff, wolves. Um, but it's even creepier when you're just by yourself and you've just run into a bison like a short distance up the trail. Um, I'm like really on edge tonight. Well, that's a little over-exaggerated. I'm paying attention to my surroundings more than I probably would otherwise. The sun is about to set and I'm trying to eat this like as fast as I can because I'm really hungry, but I don't want to be sitting out here in the dark. This is one of those meals that I don't necessarily get to enjoy. I just got to scarf it down for the calories and uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm about to uh, call it for the night. I just heard what I can only describe as a howl coming from this direction over here. Like a wolf, maybe? Or a coyote? Didn't sound like a coyote. Sounded... Sounded bigger than that. Deeper, you know what I mean? Deeper. Now I just heard a different sound coming from the completely opposite direction over here. There's like, through those trees right there, there's a big field. Almost like there was a, a lake that used to be there and it dried out and now there's just a bunch of grass over there. That's kind of what it looks like. But I just heard a... Like that. Hopefully I didn't say something to them. Hopefully I didn't say, come over here, there's a camper, eat him. Oh man, it's so cold this morning. Um, I've been in my tent all night long. It was very cold last night and I didn't sleep super well. Around 3 o'clock in the morning. I got to sleep okay, actually. I think I went to sleep around 11. But around 3 o'clock in the morning, I heard something coming up the trail. Because I'm camped, like, right by this trail. I heard something walking on the road. And I quickly figured out it was people. But it's, it's pitch black. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, what the heck is going on? And I could see, like, a flashlight going across, you know? through the trees and shining on the outside of the tent and I heard someone saying something I couldn't make it out what it was and then as the guy got, got I think it was just one guy um, but as he got closer to my campsite here I heard him say hey bear hey bear hey bear and I don't know if there was a bear but I think he was just making noise so that if there was a bear it would get scared away but him yelling Hey bear, <laughs> at three o'clock in the morning when I'm trying to sleep out in the forest all alone, just got me a little scared. So I didn't sleep su super well after that and it was just really cold. Um, so you can see I'm, I'm, I'm in here, it's, it's cold. So I'm gonna wake up now, pack up everything and get going. Um, today's the last day of my Yellowstone bike tour. There's nothing like super interesting to see along the way today but i do have to cross over the continental divide twice i believe so i'm going up over a big mountain in other words um so that should be fun 
But the hardest part of today is simply going to be packing up my stuff and carrying it the half mile from here back to my bicycle. Um, I wasn't allowed to park my bike at this campsite, so it's parked half a mile up the road. Should be fine. Here we go. Yep. It was cold last night. I don't know if you can see that, but the water in my water bottles is frozen. It was cold. Last night, as I was coming into this campsite, there was a massive bison on the trail right up here. So I'm really on edge right now, trying to make sure that he's still not around. He could still be here. And last time I didn't even see him until I was really close to him. So, just trying to look in every direction. I do have the bear spray in my pocket, just in case. The geysers erupting. I just happened to be here at the right time. See, here is like another example of how when you get away from the crowds, you can oftentimes find something that's better than the actual touristy thing to do. So yesterday I saw Old Faithful erupt and it was like, eh, okay. But now I'm out here in the backcountry. I have this entire geyser to myself practically, and this thing's going for like 10 minutes straight. This is way cooler than Old Faithful. Way cooler. Oh, I see the bison. He's on the other side of the geyser. He's like right by the trailhead on the other side over. He's like right there. I don't know if you can see him. So he's still here. But dang, look at this thing. Woo! So I made it back to the bicycle. It's still here, thank goodness. The bison that I saw yesterday is about 100 feet behind the camera right now. He's just behind this little tree. Um, the geyser has been erupting for about 20 minutes straight, which is amazing. I just happened to be here at the right time, I guess. So now I'm going to pack up the bicycle really quick, cycle about two and a half miles down this trail back to the main road, and then up and over the Continental Divide. That's probably going to be the hardest part of the remaining stretch of today. This stretch carrying those bags was pretty hard on my, on my upper body, but this going up this hill today is going to be the lower body workout for sure. Alright, so I'm back on the bicycle and backtracking about two and a half miles back to the road. This is the same trail that I rode in on last night. It's nice to be back on the bike. I'm going a lot faster. Still out of breath though. Wow. Um, there was a guy at the geyser back there and he was saying that last night on his thermometer it was 27, 28 degrees. So well below freezing, and I know it was below freezing because I felt it, and all my food and water bottles are frozen now. I haven't had any water since last night, and I can't drink any of my water now because it's all frozen.
got another mile and a half of uphill climbing and then I'm at the top of the Continental Divide. From there it should be all pretty much downhill. Alright, so I made it to the top of both Continental Divides. I am over the top now. There are a bunch of people in cars taking their picture at the sign for the Continental Divide. I think they are super wimpy, <laughs> considering I just rolled up on a bicycle and all they had to do was put their foot on the pedal. But uh, it should be all downhill or flat from here back to the car. It's about 10 more miles from here to where I parked my van. So it should be a nice downhill ride. It is really cold though. Like I am freezing. Bird. Alright guys, that's it. That's my bike tour through Yellowstone National Park. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these videos and maybe I inspired you to conduct your own bicycle terrain adventure either in Yellowstone or in some other part of the world. If you want to learn more about bicycle terrain in general or maybe even bicycle terrain in Yellowstone National Park, be sure to visit my website at bicycletouringpro.com where I have tons of information that you can use to plan, prepare for, and execute your own bicycle terrain adventures anywhere in the world. Now, while I have you here, I thought I would talk about Yellowstone just a little bit and summarize my trip. Now, I had planned on doing a much longer uh, bicycle tour through Yellowstone. I had originally planned on cycling kind of like the northern loop as well as the southern loop. But when I got to Yellowstone, the rangers informed me that because it was so late in the season, the campgrounds in the northern part of the park had already closed. And so I had to alter my route a little bit and I decided that I was just going to do the southern loop of Yellowstone, which turned out to be great. I did the whole loop in about three and a half days, or really like three full days of cycling, because uh, I started the first day late and ended the last day kind of early. Um, and I think that's like the perfect amount of time, three, four days, something like that. The distance that is cycled on that southern loop is not very large and it's something that pretty much anybody could do. There are some hills, it does get cold, it does get windy uh, at times, but the distances themselves uh, are, are pretty small. I think the longest day was 45 miles, the shortest day was like 20 miles, something like that. So um, if you're capable of cycling those sorts of distances with a few small hills, along the way, then you're certainly capable of cycling in Yellowstone. Now, one of the things that happened when I started planning and preparing for my own bike tour in Yellowstone is that I told people that I was planning this trip, and a lot of people, not only my readers at BicycleTouringPro.com, but strangers and even the park rangers at Yellowstone themselves, uh, started to tell me that bicycling in Yellowstone was not a good idea, that the uh, roads were dangerous, there wasn't a big shoulder to cycle in, the cars um, drive recklessly, there's a lot of traffic, all of these sorts of things people were telling me. But based off of my own experience cycling in Yellowstone, I honestly don't know what everyone was talking about. Um, I thought the roads were pretty darn good, like very good condition. The shoulder, there there was almost always a shoulder. If there was a very small shoulder, um, the traffic was generally pretty light. I found the drivers to be courteous um, and aware of me on the road. I was wearing a bright orange jacket for a lot of the time, so I think that helped. Um, there was an incident, I, you know, I met this other guy on the road who said he did see a car crash in Yellowstone, maybe someone driving drunk or sleeping behind the wheel and we weren't sure. So obviously like things like that do happen and people are probably uh, not looking all the time at where they're going in the road, so you do need to be aware. But 
based off of my experience, I think biking in Yellowstone was actually easier and more enjoyable than cycling on a lot of other roads in the United States of America. So in a way, I kind of don't want you to listen to what other people are saying, but at the same time, I do understand where the, those people are coming from, and I do think you need to be aware, uh, especially of the vehicles around you, when you're cycling in Yellowstone National Park. Now, the other thing that you need to be aware of when you're going to Yellowstone for your own bicycle terrain adventures is the fact that you can't just camp wherever you want. While it would be ideal for you to just be able to pull off on the side of the road and pitch your tent next to a river or a lake or something, that would be so awesome. Um, you can't do that in a national park in the United States of America. And instead, you have to go from campground to campground to campground if you're planning to camp. Uh, in the park. And so this takes a little pre-planning. You really have to map out your bicycle tour in advance, know the distances between your campgrounds, uh, know which campgrounds allow for bicycles, etc, etc. Um, there's also some backcountry campgrounds that you can go to. So all of this takes some planning. And if you want to learn more about how to do this, once again, be sure to visit my website at BicycleTrainPro.com. Type in Yellowstone into the search bar and I'll have some information for you um, about camping and which route to take and all of that kind of thing. But um, just something to keep in mind when you're planning your own trips is the fact that you do have to jump from campground to campground to campground. And finally, parking your car was an issue that I ran into um, when I was planning my trip, I called the park actually before I went to Yellowstone and asked them, I told them what I was planning to do, I was planning to drive to the park, park my car and ride around for a week or so. Nobody on the phone knew the answer to my question as to what to do with my car during the week that I was driving around. They had a policy that if you biked into the park, you paid a lesser fee to get in, um, and then you still had to bike from campground to campground to campground, but they really didn't know what to do with somebody who had a car and wanted to just leave it for a week and go and bike around the park. Now, I found that I was able to do that. I had to get a permit um, from the backcountry office to park my car. So that's what you need to do, essentially. And there's probably a few places that you could do this, but... Um, yeah, just ask around and they'll eventually give you a permit to put in your window of your vehicle so that you can leave it and they, they'll know that you're coming back at some point and you haven't just like disappeared or gotten eaten by a grizzly bear or something. They know that you're on a bike trip and that you're going to be coming back to your car on a specific date. So that's what you have to do if you're planning your own bike tour in Yellowstone National Park. Do some planning ahead of time to make sure that the campgrounds are open. Know that you are going to have to jump from campground to campground. Find a place to park your car. You're probably going to have to get a permit from the backcountry office. And be sure to bring your camera because this place is spectacular and I would highly recommend it. Okay guys, that's it. I'm Darren Alf from BicycleTrainPro.com. Thank you once again for watching my videos and I hope to see you out on the road sometime soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.